Hey everybody, today we're going to do another substance tutorial and I'm actually really excited about this one because it's my favorite thing to do, which is organic characters. So we're going to paint the skin on this alien character. If you've never opened substance before, we did actually do an introduction to substance video. So be sure to go check that out before you follow along with this video if you've never opened substance. We also did an introduction to ZBrush video and that's where I actually created this character. So if you're interested, go check that video out too. But if you missed that one or you didn't follow along and create your own creature, that's fine. I'm actually uploading my project files right now to Production Crate. So if you have a free account, you can go download them and just follow along with this video. So we're actually gonna start by baking this character in Substance Painter. In the previous Substance videos, I teased this process. And again, in the ZBrush video, I said, it's probably best to bake your maps in Substance Painter. So I'm gonna take some time and show you guys how to do that right now before we even start painting the skin. Okay, so I've just opened this up in my favorite modeling program. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick tour of what the file looks like. So I've got the alien high and the alien low FBX imported into Maya. And if you were to look at it, you can see that we have two objects per version. There's the body and the eyes. And if you look really close, you can see how I've named it. Eyes underscore low, body underscore low, and then body underscore high and eyes underscore high. Now this is case sensitive. There's no right way to do it, but you want to be consistent. So if you use a capital H in the word high, you want to use it in all of them. Or if you go lowercase, you want to be lowercase in all of them. And that way Substance Painter can recognize which files go together. You'll also notice that both files are in exactly the same place. And the low res version has good UVs. The high res version doesn't need to have good UVs, just the low res. Um, you'll also notice that I'm using UDIMs in this case. Okay, and the last thing you really want to pay attention to if you're setting up your own character is to properly name your materials. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can see if I look at the alien's body, the UVs are laid out like this. And if I click on the alien's eye, you can see that the eyeball and the head actually take up the same UV space, this first square. And so they need different materials so that they don't overlap with each other in Substance Painter. These are called texture sets. So you can see I've named my material for the body, body mat. And for the eye material, it's called eyes mat. That'll become really important once we get into Substance Painter. Okay, and here we are in Substance Painter. Let's get a new project going and bake our maps. To do that, I'll go to File New, and where it says File Select right here at the top, I'm gonna select my Alien Low. Now I'm gonna choose 4K for my resolution, and I'll press OK. All right, and here he is. To get to the Baking tab, you press on this little croissant, or if you're using an older version of Substance Painter, you can go to the Texture Set Settings tab, and scroll down to bake mesh maps. It's the same thing. Okay, here's the baking window. Notice really quick that over here in the texture set list, body mat and eye mat is here. And remember, that's what I named my materials in Maya or Blender or wherever you're working. So it's really important to name your materials so that in Substance Painter, you know what you're working on. Also take note that the body mat has UDIMs. So it recognizes the UDIMs automatically and the eye mat does not. It's just the one tile. Okay, let's change our output size to 4K or 8K if you think your computer can handle it. I'm going to do 4K just for this video because, you know, I'm screen recording. I don't want it to take forever. And now I'm going to attach my high resolution mesh. So where it says high definition meshes, click this little file and grab alien high. And it could take a few minutes to attach because, again, it's almost 9 million polygons. You'll know it's attached when it turns blue. The blue is the high resolution mesh. And we actually can't see the low res mesh because it's kind of inside. But you'll notice that there's this kind of puffy, inflated looking transparent mesh around the outside. And that's called the cage. That's how you tell the computer how far out your high resolution bumps could possibly go. But there's also a downside to the cage. If it's too big, you can see, for example, in the mouth, the lower lip and the upper lip are kind of overlapping. So I like to kind of lower my max frontal distance a little bit. It's okay if there's a little bit of overlap, you just want to limit it. And you don't want to go so small that you start to see red. That's showing you that the cage is actually smaller than your high resolution mesh. So you don't want to see any red. Okay, the next thing you want to do is tell the body to bake the details from the high resolution body. And we want the high resolution eyes to bake onto the eyes. So right here where it says match always, I'll switch this to by mesh name. What that means is body low is going to look at the file called body high for its details. And then same thing for the eyes. And you can see right here, this is where you can change the suffix. So if you used a capital L in low and a capital H in high, that's where you could change it. You can also double check right here where it says matching by name to see if it's recognized. And if there was some naming problem or it couldn't tell which models were supposed to go together, um, you would see some errors popping up here, but it looks like it's okay. All right, 
So we're almost ready to bake. Let's go down our list of maps and just see if there's any settings that we want to change. So there's no options for the normal map, no options for the world space normal map. Uh, we don't really need to change anything for ID on this character. For ambient occlusion, if you want better quality, you can crank up the secondary rays. Just be aware that this will increase your baking time. So if your computer has low memory, um, you might not be able to go all the way up. I recommend at least 128 though, if you can. For curvature, I'm gonna do the same. Let's crank it up. And then same thing for thickness. Now, if you don't know what any of these maps are, just go back to that previous intro to substance video that I talked about because I go over every single map and what it's doing and why it's important. All right, let's push bake selected textures and wait a few minutes while it calculates. All right, and when it's done, just go ahead and click back on the paintbrush up here in the top right, and we go back to painting mode. If you wanna check out the maps that you created, just press B for bake, and it'll cycle through all the maps. So here's the ambient occlusion, and it actually looks like we have a baking error, which is awesome, because that means I can show you how to fix it. Press B, here's the curvature, position, thickness, and so on. To get back to the finished product, just press M for material, and let's see what went wrong here on the eyeball. So if I press F1 to look at my 2D textures and I go to the eye material, I can see that basically it baked the shadows from the eyelid onto the eyeball. And then because the eyeball is duplicated and both of them take up the same UV space, it's projecting this eyelid onto this eyeball. So here's how we can fix that. Go back to baking. And the really cool thing is you can always rebake your maps if you need to. So the problem comes from this. If you go to the ambient occlusion tab, we can see self occlusion is set to always but you can change that to only same mesh name. What that means is the different parts of the model won't cross contaminate each other. So I'm gonna do that for ambient occlusion, curvature where it says self intersection, I'll say only same mesh name, and then same thing for thickness. Now we just need to rebake those maps. So we can deactivate all of the other ones. And now when I press bake selected textures, it'll just redo those maps that were messed up. All right, all finished. So if I cycle through my maps, I can see it looks nice and clean and the problem is fixed. Okay, and my next step is usually just to throw some smart material on the model to make sure that it looks right and everything baked well. So over here in my smart materials tab, that's the second one. Just grab any one that looks interesting to you, like this bone stylized, and throw it on the model. And just make sure that everything looks like it's coming out properly. So all the deep recesses, in this case, are kind of dark and dusty, and all of the high points are lighter in color. Okay. I'm gonna kind of work free form on this guy. I don't really have too many references in mind or too much of a plan. I'm kind of just going for sort of a generally amphibious look, kind of like a tree frog. So generally what I do when I make a new character like this is I break it up into stages. So I'm gonna start by creating some sort of noisy base material. And that's gonna be just kind of the general skin tone. And then I wanna break it up by region a little bit. So in the deeper recesses, I might add some darkness or some redness to show kind of the blood vessels close to the surface. And then maybe on the high points, like on all the bumps and wrinkles, I might add some lighter colors to it just to bring out some contrast and some sharpness. And then from there for a creature like this, I might add some style, like maybe he'll have stripes or maybe the top half will be a different color from the bottom half. Maybe his belly and his face are a different color, something like that. Now you can build this guy completely from scratch. You can also dig through the smart materials and see if there's a good starting one. So try some of the creature ones and see if they work for you. Here's a green creature skin. It's kind of interesting. It looks a little bit like a frog, but it's not really the direction that I want to go. Maybe we'll try the blue alien skin here. Again, not bad, but also not really the direction that I'm trying to go. Don't be afraid to use things for purposes other than what they were intended. So for example, whenever I'm making sort of amphibious type creatures, I actually like to use jade. I feel like this material actually starts with some really interesting patterns that most people wouldn't think of using. And for that reason, it's not a material that you'll see slapped onto a lot of characters like this. So you'll stand out from the crowd. You can see it's got some really nice soft transitions from the deeper, darker recesses up to the higher, sort of more yellow high points. We've got some interesting dark splotches, which we can change the size of. They're a little bit big, but those spots are definitely helpful. And then what I really like is these white splotches. They're kind of like veins in a stone and that makes sense because this is a jade material but it's something that i wouldn't have thought of doing uh, for a creature skin if i hadn't accidentally dropped this material on my model one time so once again don't ever be afraid to experiment okay let's dig into this jade smart material and make some changes 
If you watched our previous video, our introduction, you'll remember that I said whenever you're dissecting a smart material, it's best to start from the bottom and work your way up. So I'm going to turn all of these layers off until I get to the very bottom and adjust each one as you go. Okay. This base color is actually pretty cool. I actually might not adjust it that much, but I'm going to increase the roughness. If you're not sure what to set this at, just remember that human skin is maybe 0 0.55, 0 0.6. 0.65 something like that in terms of roughness so you can kind of start from there and if he's an amphibian maybe he'll go a little bit lower to make him just a little bit shinier this next one's called thickness scattering and this is actually subsurface scattering uh, we don't need this right now because we're kind of just working on the color map so i'm going to leave that off okay here's ao darkness and we can see that this layer introduces some darkness to the deeper recesses but it also has a different roughness value and it kind of brings those darker recesses sort of up in shininess and we don't want that. So if I click on my AO darkness, I can see that my roughness is pretty low. So I'm just going to bring that back up. Okay, here's cloud color. Looks like this one introduces some lighter splotches, some color variation and breakup. If you alt click on the mask, remember that you can view the mask and see what it's actually doing. So here are the splotches. I feel like they're kind of big. So I'm going to click on the generator. In this case, it's called clouds. And let's increase the tiling a little bit. Now that may end up being a little bit too intense, a little bit too high contrast. So we can click on our actual material and maybe turn down the opacity right here just a little bit. Okay, let's add the dirt layer back in. This looks like it's some more noise and breakup, which is always good with skin. Remember with skin, it's a very low contrast, but high frequency texture. So you want a lot of noise, but not a lot of contrast. Uh, generally, some characters will have a lot of contrast. But I always try to think of like human skin as a base and then change it from there. If I go into my dirt layer, I can see that the roughness is again a little bit too low. So let's increase that a little bit. And again, we can alt click on the dirt mask and we can see this is the pattern it's creating. It's a little bit too big for me. So I'm going to go to my grunge dirt and I'll just increase the tiling. We're getting a lot of nice detail in there now. I'm going to turn on dark spots. This is a great touch, but again, the spots are too big. So let's go to the mask, click on the grunge spots and again, increase the tiling. Very cool. Here's the veins. This is great. I feel like it's maybe too intense though. So I'm going to go to the veins and turn down the opacity even more. Now from here, we've kind of got our base colors and you can go back and adjust the color. So if you wanted a blue character, you can start with the base color and maybe change it to blue and go up your layers and do that. I think I'll stick with green for now. Okay. And here we've got colored edges. If I turn that on, we're starting to see the high points of the model sort of sticking out as a different color. And I really like this look. Once again, it might be a little bit too intense. This is kind of up to you how high contrast you want your skin to be. I think I'll turn it down just a bit. And then we've got one called roughness detail, which we turn on and we actually don't see any changes. And that's because it's adjusting the shininess level, the roughness level. So a couple ways you can view this, you could turn your light by hitting shift and then right click until we sort of see a glancing angle of the light and you can see the roughness detail is changing that shininess value. The other way to view this is to press C for color and keep pressing it until you see your roughness and you can see the roughness detail is actually changing a little bit, changing the values. Um, actually, now that I see this, I can see that my veins have a roughness value that's way too high, too high contrast. So let's bring those back down. So we have a lower contrast roughness channel. Pretty nice. Okay, let's turn on cavity dirt. And this is a very subtle effect, it looks like. It's just the very sharpest, deepest recesses. All right, and that's actually a pretty good start for a sort of slimy, amphibious alien skin. But we can do better. We basically just slapped on the jade material, made some scale adjustments and some roughness adjustments. It's not really a skin material yet. So let's start breaking it up a little bit by region of the body. So I want my deeper recesses, like under the armpit, maybe inside the nose here, to be more red, as if there's more blood vessels close to the surface. So I'm going to add a fill layer, and I'm going to name this fill layer maybe large redness. Now, I only want to affect the color channel. I don't want to affect the roughness and the metalness and all that. So let's turn off everything except the color down here, and I'll choose a nice red color. And I want to confine this to just the deepest recesses of the body. So let's add a black mask. And then I'll add a generator. Inside the generator, I'm going to choose a uh, mask editor. Let's try that. Okay, and I can see it's doing kind of the opposite of what I want. It's going to the high surfaces. So let's alt click on the mask and then I'll click on my mask editor and go to my curvature settings down here. And let's toggle that open. And I can see the mode it's set to edges. So it's picking out the edges of the model. Let's click on that and go to cavities and see if that's better. 
Okay, it's not quite what I want, so maybe instead of curvature, we can use the ambient occlusion. So let's close this little curvature thing and I'll turn down the opacity. And instead, let's turn on ambient occlusion opacity. Now by default, this is set to multiply, I believe. So it's just putting black pixels on black. So let's open this up and I'll change the blending mode to normal. And I'm gonna invert it because I actually want the deeper recesses to be white. So where it says invert false, I'm gonna say true. And that's actually what I'm looking for right there. I want the deeper recesses and sort of the underside of everything to be reddish. So let's press M for material and we're getting closer to what I was looking for here. It's a little bit too sharp and detailed. I don't want to be perfectly lining up with all the different cracks and recesses too much. So let's actually go to the global blur setting and just turn that up a little bit. Now, don't forget that you can always still change the color. So if it's not bright enough, you can increase the brightness of it, change it. You can make it blue if you want to. So we're kind of just creating building blocks and you'll be able to non-destructively change the colors up later if you decide or your art director decides that we actually wanted a red alien instead. Now, really quickly though, before we move on, we do have a little bit of a problem. Because this is based on the ambient occlusion map, you can see that right between the legs, since they're close together, we get this really ugly red stripe that goes down the inside of the leg. So inside of the mask, what we can do is go add paint, and I want to only remove. I don't want to accidentally add more color like this. I want to only remove. So I'm going to set my paint layer to multiply. That way, if I accidentally paint white, nothing happens. But if I paint black, I can subtract and just erase some of this extreme redness. OK, and I want to do the same thing again, but I want to pick out some of the sharper creases now. So let's go ahead and click on the large redness layer and duplicate it. And I'll call this sharp redness. And let's start over on the mask. So I'm going to alt click on my mask so I can see it. And then I'll delete these two layers inside of the mask. Let's add a new generator. And then I'll pick mask editor. And then once again, scroll down to the curvature settings and set it from edges mode to cavities mode. And this is closer to what I want. Maybe we can sharpen it up even more. So I'm going to turn down some of these bigger sounding words like huge and big. There we go. And you can see we're getting smaller and smaller little details. I'm going to press M for material and we can see we got what we were looking for, but it's a little bit too intense. So maybe I'll add a filter and inside the filter, I'm going to choose blur just to blur it up a little bit, make it a little bit softer. And then of course we can always turn down the opacity if it's a little bit too much. Once again, we're just creating building blocks for ourselves. We can always change these later. Okay, carrying on here, I'm going to add even more noise and break up to the skin. So one way to add more noise and break up to the surface is to add some micro veins. So let's try that. Let's try some blue micro veins. So I've added a fill layer. And once again, I'm going to turn off everything except the color channel. And I'll choose a bluish color. And then I'll add a black mask. And then inside the black mask, I'll choose a fill. And for the fill, I'll choose a pattern called plasma. Plasma is really cool because it's kind of squiggly like veins. Now, if I alt click on the mask, we can see it's kind of the opposite of what I was expecting. So let's press invert and I'm going to change the balance. Let's turn it up and you can see we get some squiggles. Let's increase the tiling. Now, this is obviously way too intense. OK, still way too intense, but let's add some blur to soften it. And let's change the blending mode of our layer, maybe multiply. And then don't forget that you can always adjust the opacity of the layer if you need to. Here's another cool tip for a noisy skin. If you go to Google and search for RBX imaging, you get results like this. And this is something that dermatologists use to look at the underlying sort of vascularity and even sun damage in your skin. This is great for us as texture painters to see the patterns of redness and other imperfections and blemishes that are in the skin. So let's try to create some red patterns that look like this, especially paying attention to how they're grouped and clustered on the face. And this is great because if you need to make some noisy pattern for the skin, but you only want it to be confined to certain parts of the face, here's how you can do that. Let's create another new fill layer and I'll call this red veins. Once again, just like before, we're going to do only the color channel. We're going to pick a nice bright red color. You can always tone it down later. Let's add our black mask. And I think I'm going to start with another fill layer with a plasma pattern. Just like before, I'm going to press invert, crank up the balance to sort of tone it down. And then let's also tile it more so we get some smaller patterns. Eh, it's a good start. Let's add our blur, add a filter, choose blur. 
and that's pretty good but let's add some big splotches here and there just to break it up and make it less uniform and even so i'm going to add another fill layer and place it underneath my blur and this time i'll choose spots this one here looks okay it's called gaussian spots 2. let's just turn the balance down a little bit to sort of fade out some of those splotches also feel free to adjust the tiling if they're too big or too small and then up here on the Gaussian spots layer, I'm going to adjust the blending mode to screen. And now we get both. So you can see we've got the really noisy pattern from the plasma and then a couple bigger splotches to break it up. Now that I see it, I think the plasma is still too much. So let's go down to our balance and turn that up even more just to lower it. Now this red is way too intense, but once again, we're going to tone it down. I'm just keeping it really visible so you can see what's going on. Okay, now here's how we can find it to just the regions we want inside of my mask. I'm going to add a new paint and let's set the paint layer to multiply. Now, if you remember, what that means is if I paint white, I'm not going to add any redness that I don't want. But if I paint black, I'm going to subtract the effect. So what I like to do is actually go into my 2D view and paint black over everything. So I'm just removing all of the redness over the entire model. And you can see I'm just painting it all away because I'm painting black on top of it. And now I'll switch to a white brush and when I paint white, I'm just bringing the effect back, but only where I want it like that. So let's choose a nice, soft and sort of noisy scatter brush. I go to my brushes. There's one that I like called Dirt Spots Moss. And now I can paint and you can see it's bringing back my splotchy red effect, but only in the regions that I want. So if I was following that reference from before, I could add it mostly to the cheeks, maybe a little bit to the forehead and we can really confine where we want this redness to appear, always taking into account our reference. Okay, now that I've chosen my pattern, let's go finally to the layer and just tone it down a little bit. Maybe I'll set the blending mode to overlay, and then don't forget to adjust your opacity if you need to, to turn it down. Okay, and one last little step that I like to do sometimes on the base skin material is to add a layer of the general skin color as a semi-transparent layer on top, because by this point, it's kind of become really intense and high contrast. You can see it's really crazy. And if that's not what you're going for with your creature or your human character, it can be really helpful to sort of tone down the contrast by once again, adding a fill on top, changing it to just color mode, and then picking sort of the average color of your skin tone. So in this case, I'll pick a green kind of like maybe this one right here, and then lowering the opacity. And what this does is it, once again, lowers the contrast of your overall skin. How high or low contrast you want for your skin is up to you and the creature you're trying to create. All right, the next step is to create the different types of skin that creatures and humans would have on their body, including like your lips and maybe the red tissue inside your eyelids and inside your mouth, that sort of thing. But first, let's kind of organize and group this together. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top and add a new folder. And I'll name this base skin and then we can drag and drop all of these layers into that folder and there we go okay let's create a really quick sort of wet reddish mucous membrane type of material <laughs> so i'll add a new fill and i'm going to work with just color and roughness here so i'll choose a nice red color and i do want to keep the roughness a little bit lower because this is going to be shiny now where i paint this i don't want it to just be flat red so let's create some color variation now I'm going to add a generator to the layer, not, not to a mask, but to the actual layer. And in that generator, we can choose the mask editor, and this is going to go crazy. So what we have to do is turn off everything except for the color like before. And you can see it's kind of created sort of a black and white version of our curvature map. This is on top of the red. So what I can do is set this to maybe multiply or maybe overlay and turn down the opacity. And you can see we've created some really quick color variations. I'm going to go into my curvature settings on that generator. And I'm just going to turn down some of the bigger sliders to tighten it up a little bit. And you can see we have a little bit of interesting color variation now. Let's lighten up that red though. It's a little bit dark. And now on the layer itself, we could choose a nice blending mode like maybe overlay. No, multiply is good, but it makes it too dark. So I'm going to lighten it up again a little bit more. Okay, and I'll call this layer wet redness. And now we can add a mask to it. I'm gonna add a paint and just paint this manually. Under brushes, I'm gonna search for that dirt brush that I like. And right here we can turn on symmetry. 
but don't worry if it looks a little bit too sharp and too speckly, we can blur it and process it in different ways. But I'm just gonna manually go in and paint where I want the skin to be more red and shiny. It's looking a little bit too red, but again, we can change the color, so don't stress too much about exactly what it looks like. Now with this character, you know, maybe his gills will be red and shiny on the inside. So I'm gonna really quickly add a blur filter over top of my paint. And you can see that gets rid of some of the weird speckliness. And also the material itself I think is way too dark. So let's go ahead and lighten that up, make it a little bit more pink, maybe a little bit less saturated. And you can see I actually blurred it pretty heavily. Now we're actually the point where we've got kind of all of our base materials on here that we want. And now if we want to add some stylization and some color variation to go for that sort of colorful tree frog look, now you can just go crazy. So you can experiment by just creating a new paint layer, for example, and I'll just call this, I don't know, stripes. And right now my brush is set to paint white. Let's try a darker, more saturated and more blue color. And let's just try a couple interesting patterns. Again, just like before, don't worry if your brush strokes look too brush strokey. <laughs> I'll show you ways that we can change it. I don't think in the end I'm gonna stay with these stripes. So I'm not gonna try too hard to make them look perfect. Okay. Not a very good pattern, but let me show you how to make it look a little bit less hand-drawn. So first thing, we can experiment with blending modes again. We try to multiply it, we can try to overlay it, just like before. And what that does is it blends it with the color underneath, so you get some of that color variation that we spent so much time on just coming through for free. So you can see if I choose a different blending mode, then we get some of that cool color variation showing through the stripes. Another thing we can do is mask our brush strokes by warping and blurring. So I'm gonna go up to filter and I like to use warp. It's all the way at the bottom. And what that does is just sort of mess it up so you can't see the brush strokes. It looks a little speckly and organic. If we want to adjust it, the settings are down here. We can go to the intensity and make it almost like speckly stripes if we really crank up the intensity. Uh, one thing we can do is blur the actual pattern. So if I go over here and add another filter, we could blur the edges of it. So now it's kind of a softer pattern. Oop, that's too much. And what's cool about this is we can go back to warp because this is non-destructive and crank up the intensity to sort of explode that pattern a little bit more. And with the blur, we get sort of a subtle speckle pattern, which could look pretty cool too. Okay, so there's one idea. You could paint some really cool patterns that way. Here's another idea. I'm gonna delete that layer. And let's say this is more like a two-tone character where his belly is sort of pale and his back is darker. I'm actually gonna click on my base skin folder and duplicate the entire thing and we'll call this dark skin. Let's open that up and I'm gonna turn off the top fill layer because that's kind of a green tint on top of everything if you remember. And then let's go way down to the bottom, maybe even inside of the jade and just change all the colors from bottom up until we get a nice darker version. So I'm gonna darken my base color and you can see we're already getting a really crazy result. Um, let's maybe roll it into the blue a little bit just to get a very different result. Now we're getting some ugliness and I think that's coming from the colored edges maybe. Uh, let's turn off that layer and see. Yeah, you can see the colored edges are kind of tinting it kind of a yellowy green. So let's just make that a lighter blue, maybe darken it down so it's more subtle. Okay, so now we've got dark skin on top of base skin. Let's add a mask to the entire dark skin folder. So we can actually mask off entire folders. I'm gonna go black mask. I'm going to add a generator. And just like always, I'm gonna go mask editor. Okay, I'm gonna turn the curvature all the way down. And this time I'm gonna use a different slider called World Space Normal. Now, if you remember from that previous uh, intro video, you'll remember that the World Space Normal looks like this. And this is actually masking off the character from different angles. So you can see if I look down, um, it looks green from above. And if I want to mask something to the top surfaces, I can mask it to the green channel. So that's what this mask does. I'm gonna to go to World Space Normal and turn it all the way on. And we actually already have a really cool, interesting look where it's blue on top and it subtly fades to green on the bottom. If I alt click on my mask, you can see what's happening. It looks like there's light coming from above. Let's open up our world space normal options and we can actually increase the contrast if we want a sharper edge. Pretty cool. Can also adjust the balance if we want more blue or more green. It's a very, very sensitive slider. So be very careful when you use it because it goes quick. But if I want more green, I can drag it to the right. And now it's a sharper edge and much less of the surface. Um, you can see it's kind of the direct top of the surface, but I kind of want to roll it around so it's a little bit of his back as well. So what we can do is scroll down and I can see it, there's three different gradients. There's right to left, top to bottom, and front to back. And right now, top to bottom is all the way up. I can increase the front to back, but then it's going to apply it to his front. 
like that. So if I want to invert it so it's on its back, I can actually open up this front to back and invert just that one. So now it's on top and on his back. Pretty cool. Um, I liked it better when there was lower contrast. So let's go turn that down. Very nice, that's really cool. From here, if you need to make some very specific adjustments, like maybe you don't like how it looks on his collarbone right here. Now on top of the mask editor, I can add a paint layer and I can just manually add or remove where I don't want the blue effect. So maybe I'll go on his front side and just really paint away with a nice soft brush. And I'm just doing this selectively to accent the parts of his body that I really want to accent. So maybe the bony landmarks on his chin and his cheeks. And this is where the real magic happens. Um, a lot of people just kind of rely on the automatic maps. But what really pushes your character over the top to make them stand out from the crowd is when you manually do stuff. All right, so if you didn't follow along and you want to, don't forget that if you have at least a free account for Production Crate, you can go up on the website and you can download these exact project files and work along with me. If you want to make your own character to practice on, go check out our ZBrush video where I show you how to use ZBrush from start to finish in about 30 minutes, and it's perfect for if you've never even opened the program. This character is also up on Render Crate right now, and he's rigged for Mixamo, ready to be dropped into your short films, and he's free. So if you're a free user, go up and grab him. If you make anything cool with him, or if you make your own textures for him, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or share it on our Discord. I'm really excited to see what color schemes you guys come up with, so be sure to share it with us. All right, later creators.